Uh, Paul Richards, who's a uh, former Labour special advisor. Paul, really good to have you with us this morning on GB News. Um, we have to start there. But, I mean, Tom didn't mention it in his piece there because it was recorded before uh, last night. Um, uh, you, some of the unions disagreeing with the changes that Sakir Starmer wants to make to how uh, the party leader is elected, and he was defeated on those, essentially. There's been, it's a real undermining of his authority. Well, it's one of those perennial debates Labour has. It's not of much interest to anyone else, really, but we like to have these internal uh, discussions. But it shouldn't really overshadow the big announcements we're already starting to see uh, that will come from the conference, because it's maybe a conference, maybe a few months before a general election. Who knows? Um, and so Angela Rayner is going to be setting out these really big changes to the way the labour market works this morning. And as Tom has said, it's already been welcomed by some of the trade union leaders. And I think as people start to hear about them, um, it will start to get traction with the public too. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because we've seen this week uh, this kind of undermining of the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer. The unions very much driving their agenda. Angela Rayner kicking off the whole conference today with a very trade union friendly opener. Is Sir Keir Starmer really a bit of a lame duck at the top of the party? He's, it's his first chance to put out his stall properly to a Labour Party conference. I know it feels like he's been around a while, but this is the first conference he'll have that opportunity uh, to talk to people. And I think when they start to really hear what he has to say, um, if they get the chance to read his uh, magnus opus, his, uh, his Fabian essay, they'll see more of that as well. And they'll start to warm to him far more. So every Labour leader gets attacked, don't they? We all know that. But uh, I think he will start to shine through in this conference. In his big speech on Wednesday, that's what the conference is sort of built up to will be a really important opportunity for him uh, to put some flesh on the bones and to talk about some of the practical policies that people can really get hold of. And that's one reason, by the way, why Angela Rayner's speech has been welcomed this morning is that, is that uh, it's got those practical policies, things you can sell on a doorstep, things that people can understand. You know, people can see the need for more stability, uh, you know, parental leave, a bereavement leave, uh, an end to zero hours and fire and hire and all these things that have created a massive instability in the labour market. The fact is, you know, the world of work has transformed, especially in the last year, um, and the world of uh, the law hasn't. So the laws have to be updated in the way that Angela and others are saying. Paul, Paul while I understand that the, pu the public aren't that interested in how the leader is elected and in the internal politics of the Labour Party, what they are interested in is the unity of the Labour Party and talking about those that that in those internal politics of the Labour Party, it exposes the divisions that are still there, aren't they? Angela Rayner, the deputy leader in the Times, saying that she would, she'd, she, you know, she'd give it, a, she, she would like it if, uh, when they talk about becoming leader, she likes the idea of it. You know, that it just seems like he's he's constantly being undermined, and it doesn't look great to the public. Well, I think it's about a debate that's taking place and that there is always going to be differences of opinion um, within that debate about how you organise the rules of a big organisation like the Labour Party. But th th these kind of internal discussions have to be played out through our conference because that's the sovereign body. But th they shouldn't be a distraction really from the big issues that we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about international relations, the climate emergency, uh, the crisis in social care uh, and a range of other big issues that really do affect people so um you know i know I'm, I'm as much as anyone enjoying the debate and uh, you know we'll be engaging with it when i get to brighton later on this morning but um it shouldn't distract from the the, the really big ticket stuff that we're starting to already see come out like angela rayner's new deal for workers yeah, but it should distract if it means that you're unelectable. If your own leader isn't able to unify his party, it means, therefore, that you're not an effective opposition and you won't be able to win another election. You're effectively leaving Boris Johnson in number 10 for as long as he wants. So surely these issues are important. It's almost a sideshow, isn't it, to thrash out what Angela Rayner or Sir Keir Starmer stands for. The important thing is trying to get the party united behind a leader to try and capture the imagination of the electorate. Well, you're right as well to say that divided parties don't win elections, but we are, you know, several months away from a, an election. And these are issues that need to be threshed out, uh, you know, at this stage of the electoral cycle. I mean, there's no harm in a leader facing down his opposition and defeating them. And we've certainly seen that in the past 
Tony Blair, Neil Kinnock, other leaders, uh, John Smith. I can remember his uh, barnstorming speech, uh, you know, on, on a rule change, but in a way that actually then uh, supported his position and got him new supporters. So, you know, the party is always going to be a party where there's a, a healthy debate and a leader can create enough of a coalition, enough of a support base, um, even if they are uh, you know, not going to get 100 percent. And he can define himself by, you know, a the people who oppose him in some ways, judging by his enemies as well as by his friends. Um, every leader has to go through that, and Keir's no different. OK, but, Paul, I'm going to make you put your money where your mouth is. Who could win the election more easily for Labour? Would it be Angela Rayner or Sir Keir Starmer? Well, Keir Starmer, because he's the leader of the Labour Party, he's the candidate we're putting forward for Prime Minister whenever that election comes. And as an established public servant with many, many decades of experience of running organisations, um, he is someone who I think the public will see as a safe pair of hands uh, to take us on into this next phase of politics and, and life. Yeah. Uh, but Paul, let's be clear, if Sir Keir Starmer puts these leadership election rules to the, to the Labour executive, the NEC, and he loses, then this conference will be dead for him before it even gets underway. I disagree with that quite strongly because uh, it is often the case that leaders put things forward at conference and then they get defeated. Uh, don't forget Tony Blair was defeated on clause four at his Labour Party conference where he announced he was going to change it and then went on to win the argument. Neil Kinnock was defeated over Omov uh, when he was a new leader. Um, you know, th these things happen and uh, particularly when they're to do with internal rules and the constitution, I don't think anybody really cares about that sort of thing. Okay. Paul, really good to talk to you. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, Paul Richards there, former Labour uh, special advisor. We're asking you on the programme this morning, uh, what do you want Sakir Starmer mm. to say?